Welcome to the world of benzene, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if organic chemistry in the first year is all about C's and H's, organic chemistry in the second year is all about hexagons. So get practicing those hexagons. So in this tutorial, we're gonna get started on looking at the actual structure of benzene, what makes it special and what gives it those very particular chemical properties it has. First of all, just a little bit of housekeeping with regards to terminology. Benzene is an aromatic molecule. Now, I don't mean that it's very smelly. It's just the way that we describe the actual structure of benzene relating to its bonding. It's also known as an arene, okay? So if you come across anything that mentions arene or aromatic, you know they're talking about benzene. Now, if somebody asked me to write down in a sentence what the structure of benzene is, it would be this. It's got six carbon atoms bonded in a planar ring, so they're all on one plane. So it's got this planar ring structure with delocalized electrons within that ring structure. And more of that in a second. So in terms of its actual structure, its molecular formula is C6H6. So it doesn't conform to an alkane or an alkene. It's got a, a general formula all of its own. So it's CH would be the empirical formula of this, actually the simplest, but it's C6H6. And you can see by this ring structure I've drawn with the carbons, we've got one hydrogen attached to each of those carbons. Now, you will notice that, you know, traditionally we've got four bonds around each carbon. This is different, there are only three, but specifically, this is what the bonding is. So each carbon atom has three sigma bonds, sigma bonds really specifically. Two of them are to the adjacent carbon atoms, so the carbons that are either side of it. The other one, the third one, is to the hydrogen atom that it's also bonded to. So each of those three bonds on each carbon, they're all sigma bonds, two to carbon and one to a hydrogen atom. Now, of course, carbon has got four valence electrons. So the fourth valence electron in each carbon atom is actually in a p orbital. Now that valence electron in that p orbital is delocalized around the ring. So each carbon atom has that spare electron in the p orbital and each of them donates an electron to this delocalized system around the ring, which I've highlighted in green here. So we do have six electrons, one from each carbon atom just whizzing around all uh, with these overlapping p orbitals. So just to give you an idea of what these p orbitals look like and what those overlaps look like, I'm gonna try my best to try and give you a decent visualization of this now. So if we look an angled view, so maybe if you think, imagine you're looking at the benzene ring from the side, but then lift your head up, you're kind of looking at it from an angle from the top. We see this carbon ring structure and each of those p orbitals that these valence electrons, this fourth valence electron is in, then they are perpendicular to that, uh, to that hexagon, to that planar ring, okay? So you've got the ring from the side and you're looking at these vertical p orbitals. So these are our p orbitals that I've drawn in red on this ring. But if we take another view, it's hard to draw it on this view. If we look at a top view, we can see how all these p orbitals actually overlap. Okay, so drawing the top view of the hexagon, I'm trying to do my bestest hexagon here for you. If we look at those p orbitals from the top, remember those p orbitals are like figure of eight shape, but they are three dimensional. Imagine two balloons end to end, and that's what a p orbital looks like. So if we're looking at them from the top, they look circular like I'm drawing here. So one p orbital over each corner of the hexagon where those carbon atoms are. Now I'm highlighting in red here exactly where they overlap. So all all these p orbitals on each of the carbon atoms, all these vertical p orbitals, they overlap. Now what this means is the electron in this p orbital at the top here, because it overlaps with this one, it can actually jump from this orbital to this one, which can jump from this one to this one, which can jump from this one to this one. So all six electrons are, have access to all six p orbitals, and that's why they end up delocalized. They jump from one to the other, moving around in a delocalized pi system, we call it, or a pi ring, because we've got six electrons all jumping from one p orbital to another. Now, if we take another view here, we can see um, you know, the overlaps from a different view and it gives us an idea as to why this benzene ring undergoes some of the reactions that it does. So as I said, 
what's happening here is that we've created a delocalized pi ring system. Pi because they're all p orbitals overlapping, creating pi bonds essentially, but it's a pi ring system of delocalized electrons and there are six of them. And if we look from the side, we can see that the overlaps in a p orbital, just like in an alkene, you actually get those overlaps in two places, above and below the ring. Now I've drawn four carbon atoms here because if you look at this hexagon from the side then you're only going to see those four carbon atoms. There are only two on the other side behind the middle two if you like. So I'm just drawing four carbon atoms here because you can't see the other two because they're on the other side. So what I'm drawing here now is, well, looks like a sandwich, really. The red that I've shaded in above and below these, these carbon atoms, that's where the overlaps of the p orbitals are, above and below the ring. So we get this area of electron density above and below the ring. And on the right-hand side here, just to show you, remember a p orbital, when you get two p orbitals overlapping side to side, like in an alkene, like in that C double bond C, then it's above and below the nucleus of the atoms, okay? So it's above and below the benzene ring. So that's its structure. Hopefully that's giving you a real insight as to, you know, giving you something to visualize in terms of what's going on in terms of this delocalized benzene ring. But how do we actually draw it? There's lots of different representations here. If we're to draw it in an equation or in a molecule, what does it look like? So our usual formula for benzene is literally just a hexagon. All right, as good as you can, although some of the ones you may see me draw are a little bit pants, you'd think I'd be good at these now, but there's a ring inside. So it's a hexagon with a ring inside. The hexagon represents the six carbon atoms. The ring represents the delocalized pi system of those six electrons that are mooching around between all of those overlapping p orbitals. So what are the headlines in terms of benzene structure? Well, the first thing molecular formula, C6H6, do not forget that. It's also a planar molecule. So it's not tetrahedral like you get wiggly alkanes, okay, because of the tetrahedral shape of the bonding. It's not like that. It is actually planar. So if we look at the bond angle because it's planar, so if we look at the bond angle around each carbon, that is 120 degrees because it's a planar molecule. There's three bonds around the carbon. The spare electron isn't there hanging around. There's no lone pairs. We've got that delocalized system. So essentially, it's like boron trifluoride, okay? So it's it's one carbon, three bonds. So we've got our uh, bond angle of 120 degrees. So we've got our delocalized pi system. That gives the molecule two things. The first is stability. It is a very, very stable molecule. More on that uh, in a second. But also it gives an area of high electron density. So things that are attracted to a negative area are going to attack this benzene ring. In other words, electrophiles. So if it's very stable, and things like electrophiles are attracted to it, it undergoes a particular type of reaction. Benzene undergoes electrophilic substitution. Now, why electrophilic substitution? Well, electrophilic because of that high electron density in the benzene ring. Electrophiles, so things that are electron deficient, are going to be attracted to it. Substitution not addition. Substitution because it's a very stable molecule. If you add something into that benzene ring, it's going to destabilize it. It doesn't want that. Okay. So it undergoes substitution. We end up swapping out those hydrogens for other things like chlorines or NO2s or, you know, uh, methyl groups or ethyl groups or something. Okay. So electrophilic substitution, but more on that in a future tutorial. So in the other tutorials on benzene, we're going to be talking about electrophilic substitution and talking about why it's so stable. It's so important. You need to know what is it that actually makes it stable and what is it that makes it different to other molecules of very similar molecules that have that C6H6 formula.